did it. Fantastic. Cool. Um, right. So I wanted to do this sort of table read and sort of just um, chat to you all and have you all get to know each other. Um, so I know we all, I know it happens in like primary school, but we're going to go around and you're going to introduce yourself. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that everyone's sort of familiar, um, and then I'll sort of yeah, we'll we'll get on with it because I'm pretty sure I'm only on like a forty minute trial, so we'll try and keep it as sweet as possible. <laughs> Fantastic. So we shall start uh, with. I mean, everyone's different. Other people's screen. So we'll start with um, Lucy. We'll go because you're on my top left, and then we'll go round and we'll introduce. So go. Ahead. Can you actually hear me? Yes. Good. Uh, so I'm doing the special effects stuff. I don't know what else Connor wants me to say, so hi. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's perfect. Matthew? Yeah, hi. I'm Matt. Playing Trent. Um, okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Jasmine? Hi. Uh, Let's see, I'm Jasmine uh, and I'm playing Lucy. Fantastic, Paya. Uh, hi, I'm Paya and I'm playing Jesse. Amazing, Martin. Uh, I'm Martin, I'm doing some music for this. Dead excited. Nice to meet you all. And Sam, if you can hear um, us. I, I care, I, I'm Sam, I don't have a working camera and I don't know who I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> love, the, love the introduction there um so yeah um i used to um i modeled for lucy once and was a fantastic person to do some um sort of uh wounds on and was a warrior so that was great worked with uh jasmine as an extra on a netflix series um a couple uh, about a month or two ago which was fantastic worked with matthew and payer before um on maple leaf which was fantastic um it was great working with them on that we're happy we had a good time um Worked with Sam before um, on Bullet Man, which was probably two years ago, maybe, or a year. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, a year, year, year and a half, I'd say. Yeah, it's been quite a while. Um, and Martin, well, I can't wait to uh, work with him. I mean, I've heard his music, and I tell you what, we're all in for a, a treat. I cannot wait to work with him. He's a very talented guy. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to working with you. I'm looking forward to working with you all. Um, we've got fantastic cast and crew. Um, we have got some uh, other people. We've got people to do sound. We've got someone to help with sort of like assistant director and sort of um, floor manager and looking at um, continuity. Um, and then we've got some more uh, media makeup people uh, as well. There was a lot of people at my college and Bridgewater and Taunton College who had um, lots of work experience hours. So I was like, come along, just be on set. You know, if it helps you out, helps me out. So they're going to come along and do some fantastic uh, stuff as well. Um, what's next on my list to do? Introduction, got that. People who are, right, yeah, I've said people who are not here. The budget, that's another great thing. We've managed to raise a fantastic um, amount of money, more than I actually thought we would, which is fantastic. We've had um, an unbelievable amount of support from uh, some people who I don't even know. I said someone, I think it was yesterday, who I don't know, gave me, it was like 45 or 50 quid, and I got a message, and it was like, I don't know you, you don't know me, but I love your creativity. And I was like, that's just amazing. So we've had fantastic support. So that's been able to get us a lot of great costumes and um, pay for a lot of petrol that's going to get us everywhere. Um, and also some cameras because my one's being fixed at the moment, but it's the same one. So that's great. Um, so, right. Just briefly before we go through the script, um, hallucinations. So I've got to do this for my final college uh, project, um, but it was a script I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, it uh, originated from a nightmare I had like a couple months ago. And it was like one of those ones where I woke up, I'm sort of out of breath, sort of like, oh, I was like, got to calm down now. And I, I mean, some people remember their dreams, some people uh, don't, it varies, but I remembered it quite vividly. And it was very much like three in the morning. And I just remember writing it down. And I just always, since then, I was like, I really want to create a film that really can sort of create that feeling of how it is in a dream, whether it's lucid dreaming when you know what's going on or anything like that. Um, and so I thought I'll do like, you know, a horror element because it's not really a comedy as a nightmare, you know. So I thought a horror element would be great. Um, 
and that's really where it came from. And so uh, I obviously I've sent you, you know, the draft. Not much has changed. There might be one or two lines that I've, I've changed, but it's more the format of it. I've been changing to look more professional <laughs> as I have to. Um, so, yeah, other than that, we will do just a brief uh, script read through. Has everyone got a script, whether it's a digital copy or? Uh, yeah, um, I was just about to say that uh, I do. I do not. You don't. Uh, okay, I, I, I may have sent it to your email from when we did Bullet Man. I think I had your email. If not, I can put it in the chat here. Let me just. Yeah, I can download chat. that. Bad yeah, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here you go. <laughs> If there's a few lines that are different, it probably won't be yours. Um, then let me know. But um, Got him. speaking of lines, yeah, just another brief thing. Uh, we um, have a uh, another person working with us who is going to be doing the voice of death. He's worked with me before on a few things. Um, I mean, I don't know if any of you have played it, but the Hogwarts Legacy game, he plays, um, he voices the Sorting Hat and nearly headless Nick and a few other people. I've worked with him for a few years now. He's helped me out on like four different projects. He's been unbelievably supportive. He's And he's a fantastic guy. And so I dropped him a message and said, look, I know you're busy being famous at the moment with the release of Hogwarts Legacy and, yeah. and everything like that. I said, but I don't suppose you have time for a few lines. He was like, always happy to work with you. And I was like, fantastic, love to hear that. That's made my day. So um, yeah, he'll be doing um, the voice for a few of the creatures and death whilst we'll have Sam uh, doing sort of the, the the movements for stuff. And then I've got my brother as well, who'll be playing death, mainly because I needed someone who was really tall. Uh, we are still looking for just a few other people to help out, but the main roles are done that we can go ahead with. Everything else is a bonus. Um, so, right, without further ado, let me get the script up as well, because that always helps. Um, and we shall go through it lovely stuff so um i shall be is there anyone who's not here i need to get back to zoom i'm trying to think i don't need to read in for anyone everyone is here fantastic yeah um so we'll just go through it does everyone know who they are i think i've messaged everyone sam uh yeah. if you could uh read I'll, I'll, I'll let you know uh i think it will be death and if it says creature as well so, some of it I may not have named, but I'll let you know. Um, but mainly, you know, this isn't about learning lines tonight at all. It's not like <laughs> having to get it wrong. It's just, you know, that's why I invited um, Martin here and Lucy, just to get an idea of where my head's at and everyone. And so we'll just we'll see how it goes. So we shall start off. Let me open it up. Here you go. Um, right. So uh, chapter one is called uh, No One. There's four chapters, just to let you know. It's called No One. Chapter two is called Escapes. Chapter three is called, like, From Life or Life. And then the last one is Alive. The reason it's called that is because that makes a sentence called No One Escapes From Life Alive, which is repeated throughout the script and is sort of very important, especially when it comes to the end, um, which you're going to spoil. But <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, so we'll read through. Um, so uh, Jesse, it's, it's in the interior. Uh, slash exterior of a forest late at night. Jesse's lying down on the floor, eyes shut and asleep, slowly and cautiously comes to and awakens. She rolls over to lay on her back and looks up at the sky. Her mind permitting the area, has no idea where she is or how she got there. She slowly lifts her head up, sits upwards, slowly looking around her, trying to remember. The camera sort of pans around the forest, the vast trees, darkness surrounding the area. <clears throat> and it reveals a, a dark figure standing behind the trees. Um, it cuts back to Jessie as her eyes catch a glimpse of the shadowy figure. But as she goes to open her mouth to scream, no sound comes out. It's silent. And so sort of a shock and uh, shocked and unsettling look appears on her face. Basically by that, I mean, you know, in those dreams where you're either trying to run really fast and you can't, or you're trying to scream really loudly and you can't, and it's quite sort of thought provoking. That's what I'm going to try and do. So all we'll have is... Uh, you know the soundtrack really and just her really screaming and making these facial expressions but at the same time also quite confused as to why it's not happening so throughout this script you know jesse is confused at why this is happening she does not know why um on to the next bit so i don't lose my uh bit uh, cut, uh cuts back to jesse uh oh hang on no we've done that bit here we go um why can't she hear herself scream she looks back up at the figure but it's no longer there 
So she pulls herself up from the ground and begins to run away in the opposite direction. And she tries uh, shouting for help, but there's still no sound. You can see tears forming in her eyes as she begins to shake. Uh, she comes to the clearing in the forest and she begins to slow down as if she's lost the, this thing. Um, but looking around, still crying and shaking, she looks for help. But in the clearing, this figure appears again and she looks shocked and she screams silently. Paya? <laughs> I just wanted to say before we start, um, I'm not currently in my own house and the person I'm living with has gone to bed, so I can't really scream. Oh, no, that's fine. No, I don't, that's <laughs> absolutely, no, that's, that's all right. No, no. <laughs> what the fuck? Ah, fuck. There we go. Let's hope we didn't wake anyone up. Um, <laughs> um, a side profile shot shows her uh, staring at the figure. She tries to catch her breath and uh, calm herself down. Um, as she, as she goes to turn around, um, her head and her body to run in the opposite direction, she comes face to face with the figure. It's a tall, dark, faceless figure. She jumps and screams and falls backwards. As she falls backwards, she's more or less transitioned back into the bedroom and falls onto her bed. So we switch to the interior of Jessie's room. Still in a state of shock, she swivels her legs out of bed and puts her head uh, into her hands. Heart's pounding out of her chest, tries to catch her breath. Um, she looks over to her phone to see the time. Little notification comes up. After all of this, there's knocking at the door. Everything seems normal, as in this whole bit uh, in like horror films. You know, when something scary's happened and it, say, for example, turns to day and you get that relief of, oh, well, it's probably over now for the moment because it's turned to day. So that of her waking up is that sort of, OK, it's over now. So then when this next bit happens, it's like, oh, shit, no, we're still in it. <laughs> so there's a knocking at the door. Her face tilts upwards, look towards the door, zooming in her face. As she goes to say, mum, no sound comes out of her mouth at all, and she's still in the dream. So the fear kicks in again, panic takes over her body. Um, she realises she's dreaming. As she looks up to the door, it's open. So as then the camera comes back to her, the figure with, these, with no eyes is uh, standing there uh, with a smile, clenches her face either side and pulls her head upwards, and the figure speaks to Jessie, nobody escapes from life alive. She wakes up again, obviously same room, this time looking up at the ceiling, catching her breath. Her phone is constantly ringing and it's daytime. So we're properly in daytime now. She leans over after rubbing her eyes to answer the phone. And so we'll have this little bit between um, Paya and uh, Matthew. What do you want? What do you mean, what do you want? Where the fuck are you? Jessie looks over at the clock, realising she's missed the bus to go to school. Ah, oh, fuck. I'll walk in later then. You're all good? You didn't answer your phone all night last night. Been ringing and texting you. Oh, I I just fell asleep early. Jesse, the last time you fell asleep early was when we started drinking at Charlie's party at eight in the morning. You never sleep early. What's on? I'll chat to you later. I need to get ready for college anyway. I'll try and catch a lift with my mum if she hasn't left for work yet. It's no worries. I'll see you soon. Wait. What? I... I had... <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Bye. Amazing. Ends call. Uh, Jesse puts the phone down by bed and gets up. Cuts to chapter two escapes. The exterior of the college in Taunton. Uh, Jesse is walking from college down a pathway. Uh, where she's meeting her friends. As she walks down, she catches her friend's eye wave, uh, and waves. Um, but as she gets closer, she'll sort of look in the corner of her eye. So where this figure is, is where the camera will be. So she'll look into camera. Um, and basically, the figure's going to be there. But it's going to be uh, holding Jesse. So it's going to be like a, a clone. I'm not trying to get technical with anything and start green screening. We'll basically just do two shots where you're in different places. But the quick camera work will make it look like uh, it's a clone. Um, so, uh, yeah, the creature standing in the middle of the field with Jesse standing right next to her, uh, eyes open. She stops and stares. She's looking right at herself. She's sort of in a trance um, at, at this state. Um, but as the camera comes back on Jesse, her friend uh, right next to her, sort of, as she just says, sort of, you know, hey, you're right. It's more of like a jump scare as she comes out of it. So we'll go from um, Jasmine, please. Thank you. <laughs> right. So do you want me to do the bit where, it, like, it would be like, Jesse? Or yeah, yeah, that, that, going. that would be great. Yeah, please, yeah. Okay, cool. So, Jesse, hey, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You don't look fine. 
Shit, did you get any sleep last night? Mm, not really. How come? Just had a bad dream. About what? Flashbacks start to occur, little fragments and glimpses, uh, glimpses of what's happened last night with the dream and the thing she saw. You know those dreams where you try shouting, screaming, but you have no voice? No one can hear you. It was like that, just kept me awake all night. Yeah, that doesn't sound great. I used to have those dreams quite a lot. No one could hear me. I was screaming so loudly. What night? So I was seeing this thing. Camera switches to Jessie as she starts to remember her dream and the creature she, she saw. I couldn't move. I felt like I was trapped. I went all cold and everything around me was dead and quiet. I was suddenly conscious and I knew what was going on. It was like real life. This place I was in, it felt familiar. I'd been there before, but I don't know when. I just remember looking up at this thing and it grabbed me and it said something like, No one escapes from life for life. Lucy looks up at Jessie confused and scared on how she knows what happened. So in this moment, they're both sort of looking at each other, trying to understand how the hell do you both know this? So Jessie looks back at Lucy and she has no idea why she knows this. Uh, immediately after they look at each other, there's a voice that comes from the field around them, which will be done by uh, Jason Anthony. So he says... Uh, be afraid, be very afraid, the end is near. There might, that might have been a bit, I added in my final draft, I can't remember. Um, but we both see Lucy and Jessie looking towards the clearing in the field. We then focus on Lucy as she looks next to her. Uh, Lucy? Jessie then disappears. It's been in, uh, it's been in, oh sorry, hang on, Jessie disappears, it's been in Lucy's head the whole time. So basically the entire start of this, we think it's all, um, we think it's all Jessie. We think it's obviously it's in her head. We're following her. So this is the point in the story where it's like a complete change of tone, a change of atmosphere, a change of everything. We're like, right. And so throughout this entire bit, especially this middle bit, I don't want the, uh, there's nothing worse when an audience comes into a horror film and goes, oh, I bet that's going to happen. Or I bet there's going to be this person jumping around the corner. I don't want it to be like that. I want people to constantly be like, okay, I don't get it. Like what's going to happen next? You know what I mean? So that's sort of the turning point. Um, of it's like hang on it's it's in Lucy's head so questioning you know no one knows what's going on right now <laughs> um, uh, as she looks next to her yeah Jesse uh, Jessie then disappears it's, it's been in Lucy's head uh, the whole time Sam I'll let you voice this because I feel bad that I've let oh. you <laughs> it's the um it was you it, it, it was you yeah yes yeah 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 sorry it was you you could have stopped this. No one escapes life alive. Amazing. And then we uh, cut to uh, a flashback, the exterior of the woods and a car crash. I'm not going to get in the technical side, but before you think, how the hell are we going to do a car crash? I don't have the budget <laughs> for a car crash. Okay, I'm not crashing cars. Um, basically, we're using uh, miniatures and uh, forced perspective, depth of field, stuff like that. Um, so I'll be setting on a table. Um, I'm still debating whether to have it on fire or not. It's very hard technical wise. I want it to still look good. But that's basically how we're doing it before you think, am I going to be in a car crash? <laughs> You're not. <don't> worry. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we'll be doing something uh, like that. And it will be uh, in the woods. I filmed a horror film there before, Celestial, and it was a fantastic setting. Um, so, yeah, Lucy's standing down a small lane as far as the eye can see as she turns around to face the camera. You can see bright orange, red and yellow reflections in her eyes and face. And we then look up at the car crash with the uh, with the car upside down and a body hanging out the window. Out of nowhere, Jessie's voice appears behind her. You did this. Cuts to a shot of Jessie with blood and scars all down her face. Bits of leaves, dirt and blood trickling down her hair. She stares at Lucy. She pulls a knife out from her jacket. Lucy goes to run, but finds herself not moving. She can't scream nor move. No one escapes from life alive. She lunges towards Lucy, twisting the blade inside her. Lucy screams, tears rolling down her cheeks. But no sound can be heard. All you can hear is the sound of the knife piercing the skin. The camera pans over to the clearing in the forest where you can then see this shadowy figure. So this figure sort of overlooking, you know, the thing. And again, Jesse sort of caught its eye a bit, but obviously he's still in a huge amount of pain. Um, I'll let 
let's um, do this bit. If, if you can. Thank you. Uh, no one escapes from life alive. You are vulnerable, scared, isolated. Your dreams prove that there is no end to your suffering. Amazing. Chapter four, Alive. Uh, we open up on Jessie in her bedroom. She's asleep. The bedroom's cold, dark and quiet. And then Jessie jumps up from her bed as if she's suddenly been awoken. And she's hyperventilating and her granddad rushes in the room. Um, just to quickly say, so we have got someone playing the granddad. He's at a gig tonight. Um, I've got a separate one with him tomorrow, I think. Um, his name's Keith. Um, I actually worked with him back in 2019 on my first ever thing I did, which was a music video, and he was fantastic. Him and I think he was his grandkids in it. And Sam, you'd know him from um, yeah. Bullet Man. Yeah, um, he was, yeah, he's lovely. He's a, he's a great guy. Um, and I messaged him straight away and he was like, I'm up for it. And it was lovely. So, yeah, he'll be he'll be um playing the granddad um so i'll speak for the granddad and then we'll just switch to jesse so yeah okay i'll start out with granddad great acting skills coming in right whoa, whoa, whoa honey what's up Shh, talk to me what's up it was it was another bad dream they just keep happening they don't fucking stop did you take your medication like you should be doing yes i did he tries to calm her down he puts his chin on her head comforting her so basically that bit where he talks about the medication that's the bit where we'll be into you know you're sort of like okay so perhaps she's been hallucinating it they'll also hopefully think about the title of the film and go that kind of will make sense <laughs> um so that's sort of the realization bit hopefully um so yeah um you know what happened it it wasn't your fault it's bad i know and i can't imagine how it was and i know you wish you never stood foot in that car your mum and dad, they wouldn't want you to be in this state, which is why you need to keep on taking your medication. I know. I'm trying. It has weird effects to it. It gives me weird dreams, horrible dreams. It makes me hallucinate. I can't keep thinking of Lucy and mum and dad. Fragments and flashbacks of the car crash. Instead of Lucy standing there, it's Jessie with blood all over her face. We are all trying to help you. That's all we've ever tried to do since that night. We want to help. If you need to help us back and take your medication. We're all here for you and always have been, and nothing will change that. What you choose to do from now on will not bring back your mum and dad, nor Lucy. But it can help you move forward. It will help you regain your strength and live your life. It wasn't just a father you lost that day. I lost a son. Something a father never wants to experience in their lifetime. I wish he was still here. I mean, he always spoke very highly of you. He was always singing your praise. As did your mother. And I'm sure Lucy didn't have a bad thing to say about you either. And then the camera faces on Jesse. Get some rest, okay? I'm only in the next room. Thank you, Granddad. I don't know what I'd do without you. Jesse's Granddad smiles and walks off to close the door and turns off the light. But before he goes out, he looks back at Jesse. Jesse? Yeah? Remember, when you're feeling down, and if you have these hallucinations or bad dreams, and at this point when he's saying that, it sounds like it's like a lullaby, she's going to be sleeping. And then when he says, it, it won't be him saying it, it'll be actually the voice of the creature. He'll go, no one escapes from life alive. And she'll look up, and it's a bit like, whoa, you know, violins, whoa, oh my God. Um, and sort of alarm bells are ringing, camera looks on Jesse's face um, as he speaks to her. And as he says, no one escapes from life alive, a look of fright and utter fear reveals itself on her face. She pulls her head up from her pillow and looks up at the door. As the creature leaps at her with its hand striking her face, we see the shadowed figure looking over at Jessie as she's being ripped apart. The end. <laughs> so that is the script. I don't know if there are any bits that I might have written differently as an update that I might have missed out. I don't know. I can't remember what. But you've all got the same version, but there might just be an updated one I have with a few different words to it. But that is how it's going to stay. The look of it is just going to be different. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, I can't really tell you uh, an answer to, like, what actually has happened. That's the whole point of this, is it's more of a mind fuck. You are constantly not knowing if it's in someone's head, if she died in the car crash, if she didn't, if she's not taking the medication, is it still in Jesse's head? You just don't know, you know? Um, and so throughout this whole thing, it's just gonna sort of be just a fun journey. Um, 
so basically that's it does anyone have any um sort of questions about it or maybe about their role or or anything like that all good what sort of um age is obviously college sort of age but yeah yeah so uh, yeah ev everyone is sort of um yeah college age sort of maybe going into university a little bit as well um but yeah yep. they sort of are um age uh, uh, ranging around that yeah cool and so i hope lucy you got a better understanding so that this creature looks amazing <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we've got the other media makeup people, um, I said, so they'll be doing the uh, sort of cuts and helping out with um, the car crashing. Obviously, there is still a lot I need to do when it comes to sort of the schedule and stuff like that. So thank you all for bearing with me when I randomly message you about dates you're available. Um, I hope you all enjoy when we do film um, on, on set. Um, it's always, uh, hopefully, as people can vouch for me, it's always fun on set. You know, we always have a good time. Um, and I really just cannot wait uh to do this film mainly because and i know i've said that with every production i've done but for this one not to my own horn or anything but with the last film we did it has created a reputation that i did not know it would do so now it has <laughs> the pressure's on to make this one now because it's the next one when you make it film, <laughs> it's like i kind of i'm glad i won 16 awards and that hey i got like best actress and stuff like that but now it's like oh shit now i need to kind of make another one now so it's a bit of pressure but it's going to be fantastic and I said I can't wait you know to work with Martin um and on the soundtrack and you know we've been talking about inspiration um and mm -hmm. yeah I'm glad we have the same view on some soundtracks of films we've watched as well you know it's always great so um oh yeah yeah so. yeah. yeah no you're but yeah barking up the same tree as me I yeah. think yeah a lot of this uh, yeah no it's exciting fantastic Lovely. I really like it. I've already been sketching some stuff, so I'll send you some Amazing. ideas soon. Amazing. Yeah. Love that. Okay, fantastic. So if there's not any more questions, that's the end of my script I've written down to say. That's everything. Um, okay, yeah. So I said I won't um, sort out now about dates are free because I'm still just sorting out um, what scenes we're filming in what order. But I think I have got dates of when people are available. So it will just be trying to work around um, everybody's times and that, you know, I don't want people taking off time off work and that, you know, so I want to try and hopefully work around everyone's schedule as much as I can. And lastly, you know, I just want to thank you all. I know we haven't done it yet, but I appreciate you all um, signing up to do this with me um, because and I, mean, I do mean this, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without any of you. And that is any of you, whether you're acting, doing the music, the media makeup, it's, you know, I, I can't wait to make this. It's going to be fun. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Let me end that um, thing there.